Hey there, Braves fans. Welcome to another edition of State of the Braves. I'm your host, George McNair. Great to be back with you once again. Well, guys, um, it's what the Braves do. They extend players, and they've done it again uh, with the extension of Sean Murphy. That's going to be kind of the main topic we'll, we'll uh, cover today. Um, a couple of things we do want to uh, talk about real quickly. And before we even do that, I just want to point you guys to uh, my YouTube channel. I um, have, of course, been doing this podcast for some time now, and I've dabbled in the YouTube world, and I'm going to really try to commit to uh, putting more um, more videos consistently on YouTube, uh, basically just giving you a video version of my podcast. So please go on over and check it out. Some people prefer just listening, and I certainly understand that. You might not want to see my face. Uh, but those of you who might be more interested in watching the video version, it's going to be out there and just another way for this uh, this podcast to get out to Braves fans. So please share it, uh, let other people know, and I do do appreciate it. All right, well, let's uh, let's get into a little bit of Braves news. Uh, the Braves recently uh, made a small trade with the Yankees for relief pitcher Lewis Litke. Uh, this guy is a 35-year-old left-handed relief pitcher that the Yankees DFA'd. So on the surface, when you hear that, that does not um, you know, really uh, excite anybody. But Litke has actually been really good the last two years. He's one of these guys, you occasionally see this, even the Braves have seen it with, with Tyler Matzik, a guy that kind of later in his career uh, figures something out and uh, was, you know, went from a guy who couldn't break into the majors to suddenly a guy who, who does and has some success. So Litke is that guy. Uh, like I said, 35 years old, but um, he is a lefty with a really good curveball, um, a solid fastball, but you know, not a he's not a flamethrower. He only throws about 90, but a lot of people, you know, uh, like this guy, and uh, I do too. I think uh, the the best thing about him is he throws strikes. He has a really good uh, strikeout to walk ratio, and gives the Braves another good lefty option out of the bullpen. Something they have lost with Tyler Matzik going down with Tommy John uh, this this season. Uh, the Braves also, uh, this week, uh, they also got Eli White from the Rangers in a deal for cash. Eli White uh, is maybe at best a fourth outfielder. Uh, his big acclaim to fame is his speed. He is one of the fastest guys in all of baseball. So if he can get on base, he has some real value. The problem is he doesn't get on base very much. So this is why he's available. Um, but, you know, if the Braves uh, want to really utilize him in a pinch pinch running role and, you know, maybe he can start hitting a little bit more, then he might find a way to get on the team. I don't know that he's uh, certainly likely to, to make the team, but I could see with Guillermo, Guillermo Heredia being gone, he might fit that void possibly possibly the Braves are kind of throwing everything at the wall to see if it'll stick as far as outfielders go so Eli White is just another piece to that all right well let's get into the Sean Murphy deal the extension of course Murphy was uh, was uh, acquired from the Oakland Athletics not too long ago just a couple weeks ago um, and we're not going to rehash that deal but uh, it was kind of a surprising deal, right? Because the Braves were strong at catcher. Uh, and then they sent two catchers in the deal to get Sean Murphy, who is considered a top five catcher in all of baseball. He has been very good for the last three years. He's only 28 years old. Uh, and when the Braves got him, he had three years of control left. And now uh, the Braves are going to have him for longer than that. They, they extend him uh, in a six-year deal for $73 million. And uh, they also were able to tag on a seventh year team option uh, for another $15 million on that deal. Uh, you know, anytime you get this kind of deal with a team option with no buyout, uh, it is team friendly to begin with. And I think most people would consider this, uh, this extension another team friendly deal that the Braves are able to get uh, <laughs> extending a very good player uh, in, in Sean Murphy. So, you know, here we go again, right? The Braves are masters, and I'll say specifically Alex Anthopoulos seems to be the master of the team-friendly extension, and it's all to the Braves' benefit. I mean, we know, guys, that the Braves have this incredible core of young, talented players uh, signed for the foreseeable future. Uh, they are, honestly, in this way, they are the envy of baseball, 
right? Because when you extend players like this, what you don't have to do is go out on the free agent market and, you know, spend a half billion dollars like like the Mets have done to try to rebuild their team, right? That's what happens when you don't uh, control your players and when you're forced to go out on the free agent market. I've told you guys this many times, but Alex Anthopoulos is all about value and he's not going to sign deals that he, he feels like are not a good value. And quite honestly, the Braves barely played in the free agent market at all this offseason. And that should tell you something, right? He doesn't think that good deals can be done on the free agent market right now. Um, he was nowhere close in re-signing Dansby Swanson. It's not that he doesn't like Dansby Swanson, right? But he thought that that deal was not a good value. Um, so th this, you know, the, extending these guys now, this is how the Braves are going to play. And I think they will continue to utilize this playbook as long as it works, as long as they're able to go out and acquire guys like Sean Murphy, like Matt Olson, as long as they're able to to develop guys like, uh, you know, Michael Harris and, and uh, Spencer Strider and, and Austin Riley and all these guys, they're going to do it and they're going to extend them. Uh, and it's working for them right now. So uh, this is really guaranteeing the Braves are going to be a formidable force in the National League East for the foreseeable future. Uh, Sean Murphy, let's just get into him a little bit more, right? He is 28 years old. Um, he is really entering the prime of his career, and the Braves are going to have him really for his prime. And this is a great thing. It's a great thing about extending a player at this stage of his career. That's the other thing about playing in the free agent market, right, is you, you might go out and get a really good player, but you're signing him when he's 30 years old, and he might only have two or three years left in his prime, and then the rest of it, he's in decline. And, man, I, I look at the Phillies and, and, you know, getting Trey Turner and, and of course, Correa and that whole, that whole deal, uh, which maybe we should talk about too, but, you know, it's – you don't know what a guy's going to be like when he's 35, 36, 37. I mean, most guys decline and some decline really rapidly. I mean, Braves fans know this with Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones might, you know, I hope he can get into the Hall of Fame uh, here in the next few years, but he he rapidly declined in early in his 30s. And some guys do, right? Uh, some guys are not great at taking care of themselves. Other guys have you know, knee injuries or, or just put a lot of stress. I think Andrew Jones just, you know, had put so much stress on his body playing center field for, for that time. I mean, it is, um, you know, people might say that baseball is, is an easier sport on your body, but the thing about it is 162 games, uh, it can wear and tear on you. Uh, so that daily grind, right? So anyways, I, I think the Braves are, are really smart to go out and extend Sean Murphy, um, six years, $73 million. Uh, at the height of this contract, he'll be making $15 million a year. Um, and let's just for a minute think about, uh, are there any contracts in baseball that, that are kind of similar to this from the catching position? And really the only guy um, who you would say is an elite catcher uh, and has signed a big contract out there. Um, is JT Real Muto. Now there's some other big contracts out there, but in terms of kind of the top five, top six catchers in the in the league, Real Muto is the one with the big contract. And he signed it fairly recently. Uh, five years, $115 million. He signed it two years ago. He's got three years left. And that contract is about $24 million a year. Now Real Muto is definitely um, on a different level than pretty much anybody else in baseball. I and mean, he's the number one catcher in baseball right now. Uh, and very few people are going to argue with that. Um, so yeah, he's going to make more than Sean Murphy, but you know, $9 million more every year. Um, the Braves can look at that and say, we did a pretty good job. Now that being said, I will say that that contract is not bad for the Phillies. I mean, I think they got a pretty good deal on, on um, Real Muto too. And that was also an extension. Uh, after they traded for him from uh, from Miami. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, uh, the Braves can look at that, compare that deal. Real Muto will be signed through age 35, um, and, and Murphy will be signed through age 
34 as catchers go you know they there's certainly a lot a lot of wear and tear on their bodies as well so um it it becomes a little more risky to sign catchers deep into their 30s and i don't think you want to do that if at all possible but you know this is people will will criticize right they'll criticize the guys who sign suppose these supposed team friendly deals and well i shouldn't say supposedly they are right they're pretty team friendly but um but you can understand it too. I mean, Sean Murphy has only made 30 or sorry, he's only made $2.4 million his entire career to this point. Now we would all love $2.4 million. Okay. But he did live in California. So most of that money's gone in taxes anyways. Right. So now he comes to the Braves and you know, there's no guarantees in life. I mean, he could go out tomorrow and blow out his knee and his career could be over or he could be you know, maybe not career over, but he's never the same player. And, you know, so he gets to sign a, a contract for $73 million and it's guaranteed. And he is never going to have to worry about money for the rest of his life. His kids won't have to worry about money for the rest of their lives. Um, and maybe beyond that, right? Maybe even his grandkids. So, you know, look, you understand it. Did he leave money on the table? If he had gotten to free agency, Sean Murphy you know, at age 30 or whatever he would be, uh, yeah, he might be able to, to pick up, you know, more money than, than what he did in this deal. But, but reality is, I think, you know, he's, he's at a place where he wants to be, he thinks he's going to, uh, be successful in Atlanta. He's going to be on winning teams and he's also going to have $73 million in his bank account. And, 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 you know, Alex Anthopoulos knows this. I, I think the Braves certainly target guys um, who they have a good idea that, you know, we're going to be able to have a good chance to um, to extend this guy. I think they knew that with Matt Olson. Of course, Matt Olson was from Atlanta. Um, and I think um, I think Sean Murphy's from the Nashville area, which, of course, is not, if you know your geography, it's not too far away. So it makes a lot of sense uh, on that level as well. But but certainly Sean Murphy is a top five catcher. Um, if you look at some of the other top five catchers and why they're not making huge money uh, right now, they're all pretty young and haven't reached free agency yet. Will Smith with the Dodgers. He's actually the exact same age as Murphy uh, and also has three years of team control left. Uh, a lot of people think he's going to you know, test the free agent market um, and we'll, we'll see what he does. I mean, you know, you might... Uh, three years from now be saying, wow, yeah, um, Sean Murphy could have made way more money. Uh, who knows where the market's going to be at that point, but, but Will Smith is right there. Adley Rutschman, um, is, uh, maybe could be the, you know, he could overtake JT Real Muto soon in terms of best catchers in baseball. Uh, but he just came up with the Orioles last year. You got Alejandro Kirk, you got Cal Raleigh, uh, guys in the, in the, in the, um, American league. Uh, but again, uh, you know, just cracked through a year or two ago, uh, they're going to be under team control for a long time. Those teams might, might want to extend those guys too. We'll, we'll see about it. But, but, you know, the Braves obviously really value what Murphy can do. He's a very, very good defensive catcher, uh, who does have a good bit of power. Um, and I think we could potentially see him break through in a bigger way offensively this year too. So. Uh, the Braves definitely did a good job in extending Sean Murphy. You guys know that I, w I wasn't the biggest fan of uh, the Murphy deal. I thought they could have utilized their, you know, um, their internal, uh, you know, options better and gone out and maybe gotten a left fielder or something else that was a clear area of need. But I like Murphy. And if you, if you trade for him, it actually makes a whole lot of sense to extend him and keep him. Um, it makes that deal much more valuable to do actually. So, uh, so they have done that and they've done it a lot, right? They've done it to a lot of guys and you start wondering, okay, why are the Braves so good at extending their players, right? These team, these team friendly deals, how do they keep doing it? And I, I think it really first and foremost comes back to what they built in Atlanta, right? They've built a winning culture. They built a team that when guys come to it, um, even before they come to it, they know that Atlanta is a place that is a good place to play. It's a, it's a good place, uh, for your family to come. It's, um, you know, you're going to win, 
Um, you're going to enjoy your time there. You're going to get good coaching. Uh, there's just very few negatives. And is it the perfect place? Certainly not. Okay, it's not. But but it is, I think, a far more enjoyable uh, and positive place than a lot of other um, clubhouses around baseball. And, and that matters. It certainly matters. And especially guys who want to win, um, why not come to the Braves, right? So clearly it makes a lot of sense, right? The Braves have a winning culture. Uh, they have a good clubhouse culture. They have a, this solid coaching staff. Uh, I think Sean Murphy even mentioned the coaching staff and how encouraged he was by that and the training staff. And there's a lot of, a lot of these pieces that maybe we don't even see or think about that goes into players wanting to be in a place. Uh, you know, I, I think Braves fans are, are the types of fans that guys love to play for. Uh, so all of that goes into it, right? Uh, but the Braves are also really smart about the timing of when they go after players uh, for extensions, right? Why why trade for Sean Murphy now? Why go out and get him? You know, I bet the Braves don't go get him if he had one or two years left. But he has three years left. He's in a position um, before he's getting close to free agency where he can be gotten, right? He can be extended and uh, he would be open to that possibility, um, you know, right now. Uh, they tend not to extend players, by the way, um, beyond their age 34 season. This is something that the Braves are, are pretty consistent with, with all of their contracts. Um, and and you, you even see it, uh, sorry to bring this up, but even with the, the, con the free agent contracts they made, like Marcelo Zuna, probably the worst contract Anthopolis's has signed of any guy, right? But guess what? Ozuna is signed until age 34. Um, it's kind of amazing. I mean, if you had asked me, like, how old do you think Marcelo Ozuna is? I would say like maybe 38. I don't know, 39. Uh, I mean, he has declined rapidly. And again, um, another evidence of you never know when a guy's going to start declining. Um, Marcelo Ozuna is only 32 years old. I have no idea how that's possible. And he signed for two more years. But again, uh, you take some of the risk away when you when you don't sign guys into their late 30s. Olsen and Riley are the only two exceptions in terms of these extensions uh, where guys are signed past age 34, um, you know, for long term, the long term extensions. Uh, they're signed through age 36 season and it's. You know, uh, they also have uh, team options. Again, these team options with no buyout uh, that the Braves are able to, to get. And, you know, it makes sense for these two. Like Olsen and Riley are, um, you know, they're, they don't rely on speed, right? If, if they lose a step, I mean, who cares? Uh, as long as they keep hitting, uh, then they're going to be fine. And particularly Riley, Riley, I think, you know, if he were to transition to DH in his age 34, 35 season, yeah, okay. I mean, that makes sense, right? Just keep hitting. And uh, I think we kind of expect him to do that. Uh, but, yeah, the timing is everything, right? And um, and the age of the player matters a lot, too. Um, if you if you get, you know, 33 years old and, and you want a contract from the Braves, it's hard for them. They're not going to give you a super long-term deal. Um, so I want to dive into this a little bit in terms of just, I just want to get into the mind of Alex Anthopoulos a little bit. Why does he choose certain guys to extend and why does he shy away from other guys? And I want to tackle the two most obvious names of guys he has not extended really briefly uh, without rehashing the past too much. But the first one, of course, is Freddie Freeman and the other one is Dansby Swanson, two beloved Braves who were allowed to, to go, right? And they weren't extended. And, and you start thinking, well, why weren't they? Why weren't these two guys extended? And I think it's for two very different reasons. But but broadly speaking, it they both have to do with timing. The timing wasn't right. Uh, as far as Freeman, I could not imagine, as I look back, I could not imagine worse timing um, and a confluence of events for a player. It's almost like, Insure, somehow someone was ensuring that that Freeman would not come back with the Braves. Now, him and the Braves, I think, made some missteps, too, that kind of put the nail in the coffin. But 
there are, there are some things that were totally outside of their control. Okay, so like 2020 happens, COVID happens, all team finances become unknowable. Um, you know, there's so many unknowns that nobody's going to want to jump into long term me mega mega deals with anybody. And then Freddie Freeman wins the MVP. So his value is skyrocketing at the same time that the Braves are a little shy of, you know, with their, with their finances. So uh, an extension is definitely not going to be happening in 2020 when it, it might have been possible for that to have happened. Otherwise 2021 rolls around, right? Team finances get way better because the team is winning. And then of course wins the world series. Uh, but you're getting closer and closer to his free agency. So the writing might've been on the wall already, but it, it, at the very least, it's much harder to extend them. And then you have the lockout and the awkwardness of that off season. You have very little time to get a deal done. Um, you know, and then again, both sides did a really poor job of communicating. I think especially Freddie Freeman and his side kind of botched, the, botched some things, but, but nonetheless, right. You, you should never let it get to that point, but it gets to that point, at least in part because of these, unforeseen things that don't usually happen uh, two off seasons in a row. You know, in retrospect, I think the Braves should have extended Freeman in 2019. I wonder if, if you were able to talk candidly with Anthopolis, he probably would say something to that extent, but, but they let it go a little long and then, then all of these things happen. And again, still Freeman kind of botched his side of things. He's demanding a sixth year. Uh, the Braves won't go there. Um, you know, they pivot to Matt Olson and then, you know, he gets a deal from the Dodgers, but it really isn't any better than what the Braves were offering. And then here we go with California taxes again, right? <laughs> he can't be happy about that. Uh, so nonetheless, you know, Freeman goes away and a lot of it had to do with timing. Uh, Swanson, again, it's about timing, but it's in, t in a totally different way. His timing was, his, his personal timing was terrible in terms of when he decided to find some consistency offensively as a player, right? He's so inconsistent offensively leading up till the 2020 season. And then he's been pretty good offensively since then. But, you know, the Braves were not going to extend him in 2018 or 2019. He had never proven uh, to be a good offensive player. You're just not going to, you're not going to extend somebody uh, that has the performance that Swanson had at that point, right? So Swanson kind of, he waited too long to to prove himself as a player for the Braves to extend him in the timing that they like, right? So then it becomes harder and harder to extend as he gets closer to free agency. And so then ultimately, right, he gets to free agency and we see what happens. The Cubs offer a $177 million deal when, when the Braves are not going to come anywhere close to that. Um, so anyways, you know, timing is everything. And Unfortunately, I think it's going to happen again with Max Freed. You know, guys, he is he is approaching free agency. He has two years remaining uh, with the Braves, and um, he's not going to when he enters his free agent season. He's going to be 31 years old, and what that means when a guy's particularly that old when he enters free agency is he gets one big contract, right? He gets one big contract to really cash in, and I think Freed is going to be all about that. I mean, and, and you don't blame him. It's, um, it's just the reality. Um, you know, is he going to take a three or $4 million or sorry, three to four year extension from the Braves um, when he's 31? Because he's probably going to get a six year deal or maybe even more than that. Maybe he could get to a seven year deal with somebody. I mean, he's an elite pitcher. You know, he's finishing top, top five in the Cy Young voting the last two seasons. Uh, he wins game six of the World Series two years ago. Uh, he's going to demand major money. Uh, he's also a union rep, which means he's probably looking for, you know, a big payday, uh, as those union guys typically are not going to, you know, hunt for a team-friendly contract. So, you know, the, the Braves could have approached him earlier for, we have no idea what's happened behind the scenes. Maybe they wanted to extend him and, you know, his side rebuff those. Or maybe not, but I think now that we've got to this point with Freed, it's probably unlikely uh, that that Freed is going to sign extension. It's not impossible. As long as you have time, you can make it happen. But I think it would be outside of their mo.
to extend Freed at this point. So I uh, hope you guys, if you're big fans of Max Freed, enjoy the, the next two years. I don't think he's going anywhere for those two years. I don't think they're going to trade him. Uh, they have World Series aspirations, and he's a huge part of that. But um, but I think they got two years. They'll probably give him a qualifying offer, and um, he's going to go. And uh, the Braves will get a high draft pick for, for that, but that's probably all they'll get out of Max Freed's departure. So, yeah, guys, you know, the, how the Braves uh, approach extensions, <laughs> it's they do it at the right time. Um, they do it when, you know, they strike when the iron's hot and then um, they get to a point where they won't do it anymore, right? They'll back off of it because, again, it's no longer good value. Um, I think you've seen that uh, particularly in the last year or so, right? You see the Spencer Strider and Michael Harris deals uh, happening really early in their careers. Uh, we saw it with Austin Riley uh, last season. And, I mean, compare Riley to, you know, his deal to Rafael Devers. Devers, you, you might have noticed this. Rafael Devers got an 11-year, $331 million extension from the Red Sox. But guess what? Devers is in his last year of control with, with the Red Sox. They waited and they paid up $331 million. In comparison, Riley, 10-year, $212 million deal. So, yeah, you can do the math. Over a $100 million difference. Uh, with that, and Riley has an 11th year option. Uh, again, this is this option that um, you know has no no buyout money in it uh, that the Braves have. So you know Riley makes about 21 million dollars a, uh, a year, and Devers makes 30 million dollars a year. And if you compare the two, they're basically the same player. Uh, so you just see the the level of value that Anthopolis has been able to get. From, from most of his players. You know, not every one of these deals is quite of the level of, of value is, you know, but I, but I'd want to go down if, if you look at trade values, this is just one way to kind of gauge, um, you know, which players are on, have the most valuable contracts for the Braves. Michael Harris is number one. Then you go down the list, Austin Riley, um, Acuna is right under Riley, Strider, Murphy and then Freed. And, you know, you look at those, uh, Acuna with, you know, if he bounces back to what we know he can be, he could really jump right back to the top of that list. Uh, you know, so this is somewhat based off of how, how players are going to perform, but it's also just telling you that, uh, the Braves have signed some guys to some very valuable deals. Um, the one guy that, needs to prove himself a little bit more is Matt Olson, right? Um, signed his extension last year. He's way down the list on, on Braves with, with, you know, where their contract is viewed as valuable. Uh, but again, he, he has the ability to do that. He just didn't quite show it last year. So, all right, guys. Well, you know, I'm pretty much at the end of this one, but again, I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the Murphy extension. It's a great value deal. Uh, you know, I, I hope he really comes in and proves himself. Uh, I think some some Braves fans are, are going to be missing William Contreras, as I am as well. But that's not to say uh, Murphy's not a great player. I think it really sets things up well to have a great defensive catcher who has some power. Uh, I, think, uh, I think he'll show out well. So, all right, guys. Well, on this next episode of State of the Braves, I'm going to break down the Braves' chances for a for long-term sustainability. I really want to dive a little bit more into these extensions. You know, who's going to be around for the long haul, 2027 and beyond, basically. And, uh, you know, then we can really start looking at, okay, what areas of need are the Braves going to have and how are they going to get those either through international signings or, uh, you know, uh, through the draft or, or through free agency or, or other, other means. Uh, so I definitely want to look at that and and try to play like a GM and look long term, not just short term for this upcoming season. So we'll do that next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of State of the Braves and uh, I'll talk to you soon.